Hello, welcome to this video in which we will discuss the circular flow of income. In this video, we'll first talk about what the circular flow of income is. Second, we'll have a look at gross domestic product. Finally, you'll have to be able to describe the relationship between gross domestic product, or GDP, and the circular flow of income. Let's have a look at the circular flow of income first. The circular flow of income represents the transactions between households, firms, the government, and the rest of the world. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain the following flowchart. Here you can see the institutions that are very relevant in an economy. Firms, households, the government, and the rest of the world. Let's have a look at households first. Households are the owners of the factors of production. What are the factors of production? The land, labor, capital and enterprise. Land is also referred to as the natural resources. Labor refers to the human resources. And capital is any man-made resource. Entrepreneurship is about the decisions that you're making regarding the first three. So, for example, the choice between labor and capital. Households offer their factors of production to firms in return for payment. For land, we receive rent. For labor, we receive wages. For capital, we receive interest. And for entrepreneurship, there's profit. If we look at our circular flow of income, we'll see that the factor payments from firms to households are also referred to as national income. Firms use the factors of production to produce their goods and services. Households, using the money they receive for the factors of production, purchase these goods and services. This is what we call consumption. In our circular flow of income, there's a flow from households via the goods market to firms indicated by a C. Firms, on the other hand, need fixed assets, thinking plants, equipment, buildings, and these are called investments. In a circular flow of income, that means there is a demand from firms on the goods market for these investments, and there's a flow from the goods market to firms as they have purchased these investments. Let's have a look at the role of government. Governments are responsible for the provision of public goods and services. Public goods are products provided without profit to all members of society. Here you can think in police, infrastructure. And the purchase of public goods and services is what we call government expenditure. The government is acting as a buyer on the market, but uses private firms to actually do the job. Besides purchase of public goods and services, the governments are responsible for a social welfare system. However, be aware that these payments are transfer payments and not part of the circular flow of income. It's a transfer from one taxpayer to the other. In our circular flow of income, government expenditure is indicated with a G and is continued to firms as firms are eventually the party that executes the task. The final part is trade. Firms sell goods and services to the rest of the world, which we call exports, but they also purchase goods and services from the rest of the world, which we call imports. The value of exports, which generates a cash inflow, minus the value of imports, which generates a cash outflow, is called net exports, or X minus M. If we look in our circular flow of income, we can see X minus M creating a demand for within firms. The value of all goods and services provided in an economy is what we call gross domestic product. Another relevant equation GDP. in economics is Y 
equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Our national income consists of consumer expenditure, investments, government spending, and net exports. As mentioned at the start of this video, that you should be able to give an interpretation of this chart by now. In the next video, we'll apply this model to the business cycle.